Well, hello, guys, and uh, it's my last Sunday on Aaron. Tomorrow morning, weather permitting, I'll be leaving. We've been here for just a little over two weeks now. But I decided uh, while I'm here, I was going to cook myself some Sunday lunch. I had to make it simple. Um, everything I cook has to be simple enough to do in a pan or the ridge monkey. So the co-op had some nice belly pork and um, I did that with garden peas and hash browns and of course some apple sauce. I've mentioned previously that my Halfords cooker is rubbish. Um, but I'm just wondering whether any of you would be interested in me doing a little bit more simple cooking in the car. Um, might give you some ideas for those that uh, are off camping this summer using their vehicles. Um, if you'd like to see a bit more of me doing some cooking, just uh, drop it in the feed below. Yeah, and it would also be good if you um, gave me some suggestions of what you might like to see in the video. Uh, more of the dogs, more of the places that I visit. Um, would you like me to do a full video when we go on a walk? Or just show you the highlights, which I do at the moment? Um, so generally, any feedback that you've got, um, drop it below. And um, I'm planning on doing a Q&A soon, so um, I can cover it in that as well. Anyway, following an early lunch, we drove out to North Sanex picnic site. We were there to do the walk to the Fallen Rocks. It was very windy, but it was at least sunny. Come on, you two, you don't want to go in that water. That'll get you all dirty. I guess I'm quite lucky they're not big water fans. And we're all tangled around each other again. This happens like about 30 times on a walk. So um, I've just untangled them and now that little bit of rock ahead, that's the start of the fallen rocks. For anyone interested in doing the walk, it leaves the Sanux car park through a gate and it's a fairly well laid out path right up until you get uh, quite close to the rocks and uh, then there's another little gate to go through and the path does come a bit more uneven, uh, goes up a little hill and down the other side. And it's a beautiful sunny day. It is quite windy and quite cold. Um, and um, strangely, on this part of uh, the walk, there seems to be absolutely no bird life anywhere. It's absolutely silent. I've just come around the corner and uh, another stretch of coastline opens up. Uh, it is beautiful, but still no birds. So we uh, began our walk back to the car park and uh, about halfway back 
Yes, we found a seagull. It was Sunday afternoon and we headed back to Brodick to park up overnight. During my time on Aaron, I'd met up twice. Stephen Bennett from Country Van Life UK. And uh, that afternoon, he gave me a very much appreciated shout out on his channel. And Stephen was very generous in trying to help me get to my own personal goal of a thousand subscribers. And as I said, his channel is Country Van Life UK, and he is spending the winter living in his motorhome, Christine, on Arran. So um, that's one to go and have a look at. And at the moment, we're at 991 and counting. And uh, this is uh, Monday morning. And as you can see, it's fairly calm, which is just as well, because we're off to La Cranza, where it's a turn up and go ferry service. And I get seasick, so um, the calmer, the better. And our first stop in La Cranza was at the distillery. I'd looked at Largs Distillery. I hadn't been to La Cranza, so I thought I'd go and have a quick look around here. Unfortunately, the cafe was closed, but I still managed to have a look inside and a little look around the gift shop and their information displays. Uh, both distilleries are twinned. But I think I do prefer the Larg Distillery. Uh, the cafe has got such a stunning view from it over the bay. So that was the distillery and we've now arrived down in La Cranza at the bay. Uh, the little white blob that you just saw in the distance is the ferry on its way over. That's the one I'm hoping to catch. I hope that there's not too big a queue. And we're just going to have a look at the castle. So a little bit about La Cranza Castle. It was a hall house with a great hall on its first floor, uh, which gave space for the crowds of tenants to bring all their rents in kind, as that's how they usually used to pay them. It was also used as a type of courthouse to dispense justice to the locals. The Lords of Knapdale originally built the castle in around the 1200s, but it didn't become a royal castle until 1371 when the then owner, Robert Stewart, became the king. The ground floor entrance was heavily defended. There was even a murder hole where those inside could shoot down upon their enemies. And even in the modernization of the 1500s, gun loops uh, were installed, which shows that defense was still a priority at La Cranza. In the 1450s, the king gave La Cranza to the Montgomery family, who in the 1500s decided to modernise the castle. They built a new tower in front of us and added two new storeys and divided the interior into small and more cosy family chambers. The Montgomery family held on to La Cranza for the next 250 years. And the ferry is a few minutes away now, so we're just going to drive up to the ferry port. It's literally only a couple of hundred yards up the road. Join the queue, and if you've enjoyed the video, it would really help the channel grow if you could please give it a like, give it a sub if you're not already subscribed, and share it with all of your friends on social media.